Thank you. Somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you. Amen. Such an awesome, awesome ministry of music we have received on this morning. I, I was tempted to just sit there and don't say nothing all the rest of the day. Feasting on that last song, Angels. Amen. When you know that you, amen, are going to inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says that we have an angel watching over us. Come on, give God one more good praise. Amen on this morning. It is amazing how God orchestrates things. You know, many are the devices of men's heart, but God's counsel supersedes them all. Amen. We come, amen, last night getting a call from one of my brothers in the gospel, Apostle Mel Williams, amen, and he told me, amen, one of his friends, amen, was in the neighborhood and asked me to allow him to come, and I'm so glad that he came this morning. Are you glad that he came this morning? Amen. We're glad that he came on this morning, amen. And so I'm excited because when you end a song, amen, and it's in reference to your message, amen, you know that uh, God is in control, amen, angels watching over me, amen. I like to use, amen, for a thought on this great afternoon, somebody say a great afternoon, great afternoon. amen, he knows me, come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he knows me, Amen. God knows me. I am so encouraged to know that my life is not a life of being alone. That God knows all about me. Why don't you just tell somebody right now that God knows all about you. Amen. When you think that things are going crazy in your life, I want you to understand something that if you're outside the will of God, God has commanded his love towards you. And some of the obstacles you face is just God trying to bump you into his will. Amen. Now, if you're going through some things and you are a born-again believer, you ought to just tell somebody God's just taking you to a whole nother level of glory. He's taking you to a whole nother level of glory because he always needs a witness. I, I wish I could talk to somebody. See, 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 what you go through, maybe somebody that's not saved can't handle it. So God has to use somebody that he knows that won't falter or faint, amen, and won't recant and give up because he needs somebody to show the world that whatever you're going through, I got a servant that went through it too. I, I wish I could get a praise in the building. Amen. And so I come to encourage somebody that he knows uh, you. Amen. I'm, why don't you make it personal and say, he knows me. Come on, tell somebody, he knows me. He knows me. Because of this simple truth, because of this simple observation, I learn how to do like David. I encourage myself in the Lord. Tell your neighbor, you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Ah, uh, because sometimes you ain't got nobody to pat you on the back. You ain't got nobody to speak a word of encouragement. Sometimes you got to learn how to pat your own self on the back and say, God, I know you know all about me. Wish I could talk to somebody who got their ears open this morning. I tell you, if Keith Wonderboy Johnson didn't get them open, I'm going to try to holler loud enough. To tell somebody God knows all about you. Come on, look at your neighbor with some loving eyes and tell them God knows all about you. Uh, let's open up the scripture before I get too excited to preach. Amen. In John chapter 1, John chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him. And saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. As he saw Nathanael coming to him. But before Nathanael met Jesus, the Lord was full, amen, had a full resume 
on him. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? For those of you that might not understand what a resume is, when you go to apply for a job, they want you to fill out a resume. Uh, they want you to tell them all about your experience. Uh, not only your book knowledge, but your hands-on. Amen. That's what a resume is all about. A resume is to inform somebody who doesn't know anything about you before they could hire you. Uh, but I'm so glad that we got a God that knows all about you even before you were formed in your mother's belly. Uh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. The Bible declares, amen, that as Nathaniel was coming to Jesus, Jesus had already pulled out the resume. Mm -hmm. There was nothing about Nathaniel that God did not already know. Uh, uh, when God met you, I mean, you, you, you think that, amen, you surprised God by showing up. But he had already your resume. He already knew what you could do what you wouldn't do, and what you was capable of doing. I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. God has your complete resume. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, before you were born, God already had your resume. Let me just throw this out at you right now. Before you were even created, your resume went before you. God had you already on his mind. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, he knows about me. Come on, tell you, he knows about me now. Amen. And because of this knowledge, because of this knowledge, God tells Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Amen. In 29, 11, he said, Jeremiah, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go down and tell them folks that I have some thoughts towards them. Amen. Thoughts of peace and not evil. Uh-huh. And to bring them to an expected end. Uh, go and tell them that regardless of what they're going through, uh, I got a plan that's going to bring them to success. Uh, uh, tell them not to give up in the midst of the struggle. Tell them not to throw in the towel and be upset because I've got a plan. If they stick with my plan, sometimes his plan make you climb, amen, some serious things. Sometimes his plan includes a setback. Sometimes his plan or cause you, amen, to lose heart. But he said, amen, sometimes his plan will cause you to have trouble. But he said, every time a trouble show up, I'll make a way of escape for you. When you can't stand no more, I'll snatch you out of the fire. But you got to learn how to trust me. I wish I could talk to somebody. And then he not only tells Jeremiah, but God tells Apostle Paul, amen, and said unto them, Amen, your mistakes, I, when I get ready to say this, I want you to look at somebody and say, your mistakes can't handle God's performance in your life. God knows, amen, all about you. He knows your good parts. He knows your bad parts. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knew your mistake before you made it. That's why he said, I commanded my love. Even while you were yet sinner, you wasn't paying me no mind. But on your resume, it says one day you're going to serve me. One day you're going to show up and praise me. One day you're going to have an anointing in your life. Your resume talks before you are born. God was on your side. I, I wish I could talk to somebody and let them know that God knows me. Apostle Paul says, don't let your mistakes confuse you about God's plan for you. And that's why he said, amen, in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you do have a partner. Uh, don't let your mistakes rule you out. Uh, don't let, amen, your setbacks rule you out. Amen. Sometimes you feel guilty when you come around folk you think is living all that. But let me tell you something. The rudiments to all of us is that we were born in sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. But on my resume it said one day. You ought to look at somebody and say, but one day. It might not be tomorrow for you, but one day. It might not be next week for you, but one day. Ah, let me slow down so I can teach the rest of this. 
to this man. He said, he said, Nathaniel, before you were born, once you know I knew you. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 45, John chapter 1, verse 45, Philip findeth Nathaniel. You ought to thank God right now for whoever introduced you to Jesus. As I'm out there looking at Tiny, I remember Sister Burley was the one that spoke to her and told her about God of deliverance. That must have been some, amen, I don't know how many years. Amen, 15 to 17 years ago. And she's still running strong. Amen, don't you ought to thank God for somebody finding you on the curb side of sin. You ought to find somebody and tell them thank you for rescuing me. I was on my way to hell, but you came and you told me about Jesus. I wish I could talk to somebody. The Bible says, amen that Philip findeth Nathanael and says unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law, amen, the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, and Nathanael, come on somebody, somebody say, and Nathanael, uh-huh, said unto Jesus, can anything good, uh, I wish I'd look at somebody, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I used to, wasn't a good thing, but now that I met Jesus, he made me marvelous. He made me wonderful. He made me absolutely, unequivocally anointed and set free. The chains don't no longer bind me because I want to praise God every chance I get. Uh, let me slow down here. The Bible says, and Nathaniel said unto him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, now, I want to just stop here for a moment and let you into the theater of my mind. Uh, he's sitting up under a tree. The Bible says he was sitting in the area of a tree. Uh, 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 he, he was probably having some things on his mind. Have you ever had to been isolated? And you began to meditate over your life, some good and some bad. And I believe that he had a slight attitude. And that's why when Philip came by, he wasn't in a good mood. Have you ever been in a bad mood? But somebody comes and disturbs your bad moment. But see, your bad moment was God's opportunity to make it your good moment. And the Philip came to him and said, hey amen, I want to take you to somebody. And he responded because he had a bad day. You ought to look at somebody and say, I know what a bad day feels like. Sometimes I just don't want to be bothered. Sometimes I'm just upset. And I know if I'm around anybody, I may say something I'll regret later. Don't look at me like you got it all together. Some days you just ain't 100%. And I believe that the Bible is good because it never hides the attitudes of the people. Amen. It talks about in the genealogy of Jesus that there was a prostitute in his family line. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. He never tries to hide anything. Even with Abraham. Abraham lays with a prostitute. I wish I could talk to somebody. You never know. I think it was Jacob. Jacob did. But let me tell you something. You can't never... Amen. Lie to God and think you're going to get delivered. You got to come to the truth of who you are. So he says to Nathaniel, I want to take you to a man that I know is the answer to your dilemma. What was wrong with Nathaniel? I want you to understand that Nathaniel was prejudiced. Uh huh. And he was also biased. This is the kind of attitude and the traits of his nature. Amen. That's why Jesus said, amen. Truly, an Israelite indeed. What are you talking about, preacher? The Lord had already had his resume out. Mm. But in spite of his bad qualities, look at your name as a neighbor. In spite of your shortcomings, in spite of your discontent, I want you to understand that your your plans, Jesus' plans, 
and his mercy has always got you covered in your behavior. I wish I could talk to somebody. Your behavior won't change God's plan. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your behavior is not going to change God's plan. Because he'll walk you down. <laughs> oh, did you hear what I said? I'm reminded, amen, of Jonah. Jonah was prejudiced. Jonah was angry. Jonah was disobedient. And he ran in the opposite direction. But God's plan said he's one day going to be a great prophet. But he kept on running. But the resume kept reminding us he's doomed to be a prophet. And he ran till he could run no more. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, sometimes your situation is trying to get you to say yes to the Lord. Oh, yes. Can I get somebody to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your idea. Yes to your love. Woo! Oh, I feel like hollering in this place. The Bible says. Mm -hmm. We notice that about Jesus. That he always talks to us based on the, rev the resume he has on us. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break it down to you now. I want you to listen to me real carefully. Listen to me real carefully. He talks to you based on the resume about you. What are you talking about, preacher? I, as a pastor, can't deal with everybody as if they are in a cookie-shaped factory. Because each and every one of you have different personalities. And so, with wisdom from God, a leader has to know how to approach each and every individual, not, amen, as they concluded, but as the Holy Ghost gives it to you to be able to woo them and love them into who he is. Am I talking right? So he says to Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 1 and 4, he said, And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed thee, I had three things I want you to take note of. Number one, I knew you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he knows me. He knows me. He knows me now. That's enough. I'm clapping my hands right now in the spirit. Lord knew me. He knew I was a mess, but he still was calling me. He knew I was a mess up, but he was still calling me. He knew I would get upset, but he was still calling me. He knew I was short-tempered. But he still was calling me. He knew I was loose in the flesh. But he, but he was still calling me. So he said, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of thy womb, I sanctified thee. Hey, what do you mean, preacher? That's why you couldn't fit in. That's why sometimes you felt like you was out of state with all your friends. It seemed like there was things they could do that you couldn't feel comfortable in doing. It was because I read your resume and I knew one day you would meet them. But I had to put some priorities and some guidelines in your spirit that you would only go but so far. Uh, I look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I only could go but so far. Then he turns around and tells him the third thing. Turns around and tells him, I ordained. I ordained, I ordained thee a prophet, amen, unto the nations. What are you talking about, preacher? I want you to see here that the, the emphasis here is Jeremiah lets us know that the call came before you became a person. <laughs> I wish we, we, we just don't have, amen, the ability to comprehend that, that he already knew all about you. Come on, tell your neighbor, he knew all about you. Now I want you to look at him real serious and tell him that mistake you made in your life, it didn't surprise God. Come on, tell him, it didn't surprise God. And yet, come on, tell him, and yet, he still said, I knew thee, I sanctified thee, and guess what? I ordained thee. Woo! What are you talking about, preacher? Listen, 
Listen to these words now. Listen. Listen to these words. Jesus speaks to a certain nobleman. Are you following me? In John chapter 4, verse 48, the Bible says, And Jesus said unto a certain nobleman, Except ye see signs, wonders, and miracles, you will not believe. Now, now, now I want you to hold your horses. On the surface, this looks like Jesus is throwing off. Why am I going to waste time with you? You ain't got faith. But if you remember what I said, is that God has your resume. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God knows how you do. Because he has your resume. Now you want to really surprise who you're talking to right now, even on Facebook, put it in the comment and tell them this. You ain't going to be surprised. No, let me change that. Jesus ain't going to be surprised by your response. Because he knows just how to talk to you. Oh, I wish I could get somebody to understand this word this morning. Listen to what he says. So he tells him, man, you don't, you, 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 you know, you're looking for signs, wonders, and miracles. Immediately we'll tell him, people, you don't have no faith. But look at this. But when you understand, come on now, when you understand that he knows all about you, you come to an understanding to know that Jesus knows what to say to trigger a faith response. Somebody say faith response. He knows just what buttons to push. Some of you husbands and wives know what I'm talking about. You know what, hus you, you, come on mother, you know, you, know what, you know what buttons to push on Wyatt. You want to make Wyatt upset, you know what, mm -hmm. you push that button. And guess what, he going to act just like you expected because you got a resume on him. My wife always tell me, I've been married to you 35, even though we've been married 44. She's like, 35, she's going to change that number one day. 35 years. What, was she, what is she saying to me as she's fussing? She's telling me, I know all about you, baby. You ain't, you ain't nothing you can pull over my... <laughs> so Jesus talks to us based on the fact that he has studied our resume and he knows exactly how to talk to us. What do you mean, preacher? This man, this certain nobleman, was an analytical thinker. He was an analytical thinker. They are reserved. They are quiet. And they love to work alone. I'm talking about an analytical thinker. Their ability to concentrate is more marked than that of all other personalities. An analytical thinker, amen, he loves to concentrate, and that's his strong point. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As an analytical thinker, they are the most introvert personality types. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me so far? But what is so interesting is that they are open for interested in new information. But they analyze everything. You ought to look at your wife. So that's why that look be on your face. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, that's why that look be on your face. I always bother Brother Ernie. Sometimes I'm talking to Brother Ernie and it looks like he leaves me because of the look that is on his face. And I'll stop talking and say, you all right? Because what? He's thinking. He tells me all the time. I'm thinking, Pastor, while you're talking. And so it lets us know that you notice now, I want you to notice something, the interaction of Jesus with Nathaniel. The Bible says in John 4 and 49, not, not Nathaniel, I'm, the noble man. He says, the noble man says unto Jesus, Sir, come down here, my, my child die. What did he say? My child is at the point of death. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, did you hear what he just said? I, I, I really need, come on now, I really need you to walk into the experience of what I'm talking about. His son was at the point of death. Are y'all hearing me? Jesus says unto him, go thy way. 
thy son liveth. Uh -huh. And the man did what? He believed the word. Wait a minute now. Jesus says unto him, man, I ain't got time to fool with you. Because I understand that you ain't going to move until you see something. Amen. So just go on to your house because your request has already been answered. Now, 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 I need you to understand something. That the fame of Jesus had already went out. Are y'all with me? The fame of Jesus had began to spread abroad. So when Jesus told this analytical thinker, go your way. Your child is already healed. Some of us would have said, wait a minute, Jesus. I done come all this way. I done pushed through a crowd. I done paid some people off to get into the line. And all you got to say to me is go your way. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus had already read his resume. Now you must remember now, the buzzword was out about Jesus. Who do man say that I, the son of man, am? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the buzzword was already out. And this analytical thinker, uh -huh, this, this man that sides things up, this man whose strength was in concentrating on that which was on his mind, when he finally got the opportunity to meet him, and Jesus said, go your way, he just believed. <laughs> I wish I could get somebody out here with a smile on their face. And just tell somebody, all you got to do is just believe. Now look, now look. Jesus knew the man. In John 4, 51, he says, And as the father was now going down, his servant met him and said unto him, saying, Thy son liveth. You know what we would have did? You know what we did? I want to talk to some of you parents that got children who may be at the point of death and then you hear some miracle that had happened. You know what you and I would do? Oh, we're going to have a praise moment right there. We're going to put our hands together and start shouting. And if Robin had the beat in her, in her keys and in her feet, Amen. You'll be hollering across the evil way. Robin, hit that note. And y'all have church right there on the spot. You hadn't even got to the house yet because you got a word from somebody that saw the evidence. You would have been having a, uh, 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 hold my mule and let me shout and have a good time. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. You'll be prophesying, dancing and crying, shouting and weeping. You'll not folk over because you're so ecstatic over what results that the man had preached and said, the work is already done. But, 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 this man because he was an analytical thinker, didn't respond like you and I may have. Listen to what he says in 52. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to mend. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your child was at the point of death. You hear that a miraculous miracle happened. You don't ask how's the son doing anymore. All you're concerned about, what time did it happen? Amen. Are you seeing that this man was an analytical thinker? In his heart, he might have been excited about the miracle, but he was more concerned about what Jesus said. Ah, oh, y'all gonna talk to me after a while. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I might not get the response that I want, but I know if I hold on to his word, what he promised, he's well able to perform. I wish I could get somebody to get a praise break. <laughs> he 
was not only he was not only an analytical thinker but he was a man of influence which means that when Jesus met him he knew that if he saw a miracle that other folks would be saved Calm down, because I got just a few more scriptures to go. So the father knew that it was the selfsame hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And he believed. And what happened? And what happened? His whole house. His, his whole house got saved. I want to talk to somebody that got a house. I want to talk to somebody that got an apartment. I want to talk to somebody that got some place where you go to bed at night. And I want to tell you that folk that's close to you know all about you. How are you influencing them? Sometime you're a saint, sometime you ain't. And they can't get stable because you're so unstable. But these people knew that this man, whatever he decides to do, he done already sized it up. He has already investigated. He has already put in his chips. And when he said, let's go, there was no question. Because they knew he was an analytical thinker. Well, I wish I could get a praise in the building. <laughs> Jesus knew what to say to trigger a faith response. Can I use one more example before I close? John chapter 2, verse 23. The Bible says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast, many did what? Believed in his name. What are you talking about, preacher? His fame started going. Are y'all with me? People can fool you about their faith. But the Lord knows the real you and the parts that are false about you, too. Because he has your, oh, somebody been listening to me this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he got your resume now. Oh, you can hype all you want. You can dance all you want. But the Lord got your resume. Uh-huh. Look at this now. So, so, so here we see, amen, Jesus' miracles already were out. Verse 24 says, but Jesus didn't commit himself to them because he knew, amen, all men and needed not to uh, say anything to them because he what? Knew them. Look at your neighbor and said, neighbor, you, you, you can't fake it with him because he knows all about you. Uh -huh. Now, now, now just, just hang with me just a little bit more and I'm going to let you go. Look at this now. It says Christ, amen, knows all about us. And so therefore, we understand He's going to talk to us, amen, in such a way to trigger a faith response. Let's talk about one more. 2 Timothy 19 says, even though God knows all about you, he says, nevertheless, the foundation of God is sure, having a seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Uh-oh, look at your neighbor and say, raise your hand. He's talking about me now. Talking about me. God, come on, tell us, God knows me. Can I, can I put some more power to it? Look into heaven and say, and I know he knows me. That's what gives me peace in the midst of my storm. That's what gives me joy when ain't nothing to be joyous about. Because I know he knows me. Good God Almighty. That's a dance all by itself. People may reject you, but guess what? God has a hold on you. Let's look at one more before I close. The Bible says... Amen. In John 4, 16. But before I read it, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, how do you respond when you are rejected? Mm, mm. Uh, John 4, 16, the Bible says, and Jesus says unto her, go, call thy husband and come hither. My question is, why would Jesus Ask this woman to bring her husband when he already knew 
she didn't have no husband. Look at your neighbor as a neighbor. Because he pulled the resume. <laughs> he pulled out the resume and he spoke a word that would trigger a faith response. Look at somebody and say, you know the word is down in there. Some of y'all might have children and they're not serving God right now. You done preached enough to your in-laws, but they ain't saved right now. But guess what? One day, come on, just holler out in faith. One day, that word that I planted, somebody's going to water it. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, somebody's going to water that seed. And God's going to get that increase. Ah, you ought, to get a, you ought to get excited about it. You think your work is in vain, but God got a handle and he got a resume on every one of us. Listen to this now. So Jesus, amen, it blows my mind that he would start off the conversation dealing with the fact that she had a, no husband, but asked, where is your husband? Now, can I stop here for a second? I want you to understand, Jesus said this thing to this woman. Because mentally, she was living a slavery mentality. She gave up. Why get married again? All I do is hurt myself. All I do is get disappointed. All my dreams get shattered. And then I end up being rejected all over again. So she had got to the point where she was a slave to her past. And as being a slave to your past, you can't enjoy your next step in your new journey. Huh? So, so, so here it says that it had five husbands. And you know that number five jumped out at me. And the number five, you know what the number five means? It is, symbol, it is a symbol of God's grace. It is God's grace, goodness, and favor towards us. In other words, God says, I knew all about your travels through your five husbands. But guess what? I got your resume. And your answer to your freedom is standing in front of you now. Oh, that, that should have gave a praise somewhere in here. So, so, so the, the, it also means a symbol of balance. It means that you have to keep balance between the natural and the spiritual. That's what the number five represents. So God turns around and says, listen here, I first got to deal with your natural. <laughs> I can't deal with just you on the spiritual realm because you'll be out of balance with the natural realm. <laughs> Boy, I thought somebody get happy with me. <laughs> so God deals with her first on the natural realm. He starts talking about the shocking that she had going on. But I'm so glad that this woman wasn't a liar. You out there on Facebook, you here at the church, if you're going to lie, you'll never get delivered. You keep blaming everybody else, you're going to still be stuck in your wrong. But it's time now to learn how to examine your own self. Throw your own self on the altar and stop getting your bags and throwing everybody else against the altar. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. So based on that conversation, Jesus is about to start dealing with her natural and then deal with her spiritual. Verse, 40, verse four, uh, four and seven, chapter 4 and 7. The woman says unto him, I have no husband. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you think she surprised Jesus? <laughs> Keep wonder, boy. You think she, you think she fooled Jesus? Ah, uh, huh? No. Come on, just tell somebody because he knows you. <laughs> but what he said to her triggered a faith response to where she opened up and began to talk to him. And she said, I have no husband for, the, for thou hast had five husbands and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. You truly told the truth. And because you truly told the truth, it triggered a faith response. Look at your neighbor and say, every time you're truthful with God, it triggers a faith response. God got to do something. 
Come on, just tell somebody, God got to do something. <laughs> she, now, 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 check this out. She was living in sin but had biblical knowledge. I want, that, I want that to just simmer in your mind a little bit. You can know the Bible and still be weak in your flesh. The woman knew the word. Check her out. Come on now, check her out with me. The woman says unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he come, he should tell us all things. What was she doing? She was letting him know, I know the word. I just ain't got no power over my flesh. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's talking about a whole lot of folk right now. Uh, look at this, verse 26. And Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Verse 48. Go to verse 48. The woman then did what? The, the woman did what? Left her water pots and went her way into the city. Tell somebody, the Lord triggered a faith response. Now, 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 look at this now. Look at this. I, I'm, I'm getting ready to cl close now. You know what's so miraculous? This woman continues to talk to Jesus. Listen to what she says in 28. Mm. Is that where I want to be? Yeah. Which told me all things. Mm -hmm. let, 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 29. Come see a man which told me all things. What happened? Something happened here. He moved from being rabbi. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You got to understand something. When this woman heard her life, she began to get so excited and said, you must be a prophet. Now, y'all ready to go with me in this theater of mine? Her shacking was so secretive. Nobody knew. <laughs> they were all under the persuasion that they were a married couple. So when Jesus said, the man you with now ain't your husband, oh, she literally fell apart and said, I can't hide nothing from you. Now look at your neighbors and neighbor. Except you get a revelation, you'll never get delivered. Hit that note, bro. I, I want to hit a note right there. <laughs> Except you get a revelation, you'll still stay in your mess. But see, when you really know who Jesus is, you'll start making some changes in your life. That woman left her dryness. And ran with fullness. She was no longer thirsty in her life. Because the water you now drink, you'll never thirst again. I wish I had somebody that feel the joy of the Lord is their strength. Good God. Let me close with this. Let me close with this. We opened up with Nathaniel. We talked about how God has a resume and he talks to you based on what he knows about you. Now look at John 1, and I'm closing. Philip says unto him, come see, come and see. Verse 48 tells us, Nathanael says unto him, whence comest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, when thou was up under the fig tree, I saw you. Steve, God saw you. Huh? Mary, God saw you. With all your shortcomings, with all your problems, he saw you. But his words to Nathaniel, triggered 
a faith response. What do you mean, preacher? The Bible says in John 1, 49, And Nathanael said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art king of the Jews. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, revelation will accelerate your understanding as to who Jesus is. He went from rabbi to son of God to king of Israel. He knows all about you. Don't you ever think that God doesn't know your circumstance. Come on, give God a good praise in here. He knows everything about you. As I said earlier, your behavior doesn't cancel out the plans that he has set for you. I want somebody out there today to be encouraged. And understand that the Lord comes to rescue you. That woman was dry in her spirit. She began to live as a slave. But when she met Jesus, ha, she had a whole brand new beginning. It might be you that is somewhat like Nathaniel. You analyze everything. And you sit back and you still try to figure out, is the Lord real? Well, I'm here to tell you, your breath should be an indicator that God is real. Because he holds your breath in the palm of his hands. I want to tell somebody who might not be saved here today that this message didn't just happen to come to you. It came to you because God has your resume out in front of him. And he shared a little glimpse of it with me to tell you, it's time to come home. It's time for you to give Christ your life. Uh, you tried a many a different things, and some of you ended up farther out than you ever expected to go. But I want to encourage you, give the Lord your life while you still have time. Are you seeing the signs of the times? You see that time is drawing nigh. I don't know about you, but I want to be found on the Lord's side. If that's you and you've made up in your mind this morning that you want to give your life to Christ, I'm going to open up the spiritual altar right where you are and say to you, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart the Lord Jesus and you said that if I would say this and believe it, I would be saved. I want to tell you right now, you might not have found no goosebumps as you look up and down your arm. You might not have felt the building shake as you made this commitment today. But if you go on to be with the Lord, those other things will begin to start developing in your life. I thank God for you receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior today. Now let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this soul who has just yielded their lives to you. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will seal them to the very day of redemption. I pray that the eyes of their understanding will now begin to open and that they will get a crisp revelation as to who you are not only as God, but recognize you as Father. And Father, in the name of Jesus, as they grow to know you, I pray that they will not stop with just letting you be Savior, but they'll develop a relationship with you that they, you will become Lord of their life. And God, I thank you for this opportunity. Come on, praise team. As we close out, I want the praise team to just sing another song to you. I pray that this message has blessed you and that your spiritual strength, as the number five says, the natural and the spiritual coming into balance, that you might find that the Lord is good. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I come.
constantly thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. You constantly bless me. I constantly thank you for blessing me. Come on, sing it with me. I constantly thank you. You constantly bless me. Come on, say it. I constantly thank I you. I constantly thank you for blessing me. For blessing me. You turn my world around. You turn. The sun refused to shine. Lord, you gave me peace, peace of mind, peace of mind. I constantly thank you for blessing me. of the Lord this morning. I've got a gift for you all that came. I told Keith Wonderboy Johnson to get...